Hey, it's Steve. The purpose of this video is to tell you about the new Guild course, which is a course on social alignment. In this course, we're working on your social circle, the people who influence you and that you influence, the people you connect with most frequently, online or offline. Now, to prepare for this course, I emailed people on my newsletter list, and I asked them a few questions to invite them, if they were willing to share, some information about how their social alignment is right now. How do they feel about the people with whom they connect most often? And uh, I got some really good feedback. It was really um, emotional, which kind of surprised me. Um, some people shared very uh, intimate details about you know, what, how they felt, especially about the people they connect with. And it wasn't all roses. Uh, what was really surprising was just um, how much sadness, sorrow, uh, disappointment, regret, uh, guilt, shame, fear, anxiety people have uh, wrapped up in their relationships with their social circle, with the people they connect with. And uh, that was, you know, surprising. I thought there would be, okay, there's going to be some misalignments and people won't be necessarily that happy with what they have. They want to upgrade, of course. They want to make some improvements in this area of life. I know it's a very important area of life. It's, it's said that 80% of our happiness comes from our relationships. Uh, but I was just very surprised that there was so much uh, negative emotion in it. And even when I started sharing the opportunity and the idea to do a course on this and to work on this together, I felt like um, both in the subtext and just sort of like the, the energetic feedback I get from people um, and what they, what they wrote, what they shared with me, there was a lot of um, anxiety to work through there. Um, and so I thought, wow, this is going to be a course, uh, not just about our social lives, but this is very likely to be a course that dives deep into the emotional space. And it, it made sense. It makes a lot of sense that so much of our emotional well-being, our emotional health, our emotional reality is wrapped up in the relationships we have. It's wrapped up in how we connect with other people. Um, so I thought, okay, there's a, there's a certain responsibility to go into this space with that in mind. And uh, that's, that's kind of the you know, initial framing for um, getting into the Guild course. I also took note of what people identified as some of their biggest problems and challenges in terms of wanting to upgrade or improve their social lives. So I made a list of these on my iPad and I wanna share some of these with you. Uh, number one was not having enough growth-oriented friends. A lot of people use the expression like-minded for what they want more of in their lives, in their social lives. They wanna have more like-minded friends to connect with. Uh, number, number two was feeling drained by socializing. Someone used the phrase outreach fatigue or coordination fatigue, and it refers to a sense of social malaise that I saw a lot of people express. They would lean into socializing, not get the most exciting results from it, and then go through another round of withdrawal and kind of repeat that back and forth where they would sort of shift to an internal mode and then try to reach out socially, not be really that excited by the results, and just kind of rinse and repeat with that process. Uh, and that's not really working with people. It's not really getting them the, the long-term um, expansive results they really want to experience. Uh, the next one was uh, a pretty common issue I would describe as social fragmentation. People feel like they've got, say, their family connections over here, their work-related connections over here, maybe their online friends over here, maybe some hobbies over here, and they connect with different people in each sphere, but those connections are kind of just inch deep. You know, they're 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 showing a different mask to each group. And they wanna have um, what you might describe as more full range friendships or connections. They wanna have people with whom they can basically show up as themselves in all their spheres. Um, and they just don't have those kinds of relationships. And that's a bit of a disappointment to them. Uh, social anxiety was another one that was commonly, uh, commonly shared. Um, social awkwardness, uh, feelings of social deficiency, like just not having the skills, um, a lot of people pointed to problems in their upbringing. You know, how many of us have had that? Uh, just like with the lack of social alignment and then trying to compensate for it later in life, but feeling it just, they, they weren't really getting far enough um, into the, the social life they wanted to, to experience. Um, family pressures were a, a big deal for uh, certain people, especially people from certain cultures. I hear that a lot from people um, in India and China, most often, um, that their, their family kind of pressures them to have to be a certain way. Uh, but it's it's not, you know, not limited to those cultures. A lot of people have these kinds of experiences. Feeling judged by others was, an, was another issue. And um, another thing I would point out as, a, as an issue that a lot of people shared was a sense of social fragility. Like there's certain people with whom they have to be very delicate in their relationships and they just feel like these relationships are too vulnerable to breaking. 
Um, and it's, it's tiresome to uh, try to appease everybody. Uh, it, it, it's, um, it's kind of the opposite of what they really want. They want anti-fragile, more resilient relationships, especially relationships that have an easy capacity for forgiveness. Like you, you make a mistake socially, not a big deal if you're connecting with the right people. They'll just instantly forgive you and you just move on like it, it's, it never happened. Um, another another um, you know, area that people want to improve upon was balancing their online and offline relationships. So that makes sense. You know, they're, they're curious about where to invest, which, which side do I spend more time on as if spending more time in one side robs them of time on the other side. Uh, and there are ver various other problems too, quite a variety of what people shared, but those are some of the bigger ones that I pulled out. A lot of people mentioned these kinds of uh, issues. So if you've had uh, a rough time socially, you're not alone. You know, a lot of people grow up with, um, you know, difficult experiences here. This is really one of the toughest areas of life to upgrade. Uh, that was certainly true for me. I definitely felt like I started with some deficits, having uh, grown up Catholic and uh, just being in a kind of a social bubble, you know, 12 years of Catholic school. And then as I merged into, you know, say the real world beyond that, it was, it was quite a, a, you know, a moment of awakening and realizing this, this people are so different and having to try to like scramble to create different kinds of connections with people than what I was used to growing up. So what happens if you don't solve these problems? Well, they tend to persist. They don't just solve themselves usually. The standard I'd say we want to go for here is to find what are called elegant solutions. These are solutions that are efficient. They give you the results, but without a huge amount of energy output from you. And they're generally easy to maintain. Uh, this is a standard I learned from uh, computer programming, where you know if you could replace 100 lines of code with five or 10 lines of code that essentially do the same output, but they run faster, they're more efficient, <laughs> they use you know, less energy, uh, that's a good idea. So then go for the shorter, simpler solution. Uh, and this is something we, of course, want to do in our personal lives as well. Don't go for, you know, really complicated brute force solutions. To find, um, to find a solution that works really well, we have to explore a bit. We often have to redefine the way we look at the problem. And one of the issues that people have with their social lives is they don't really define the problem that they're trying to solve very well. They don't have enough clarity about what it is they're trying to do. They just kind of like get a sense that I need to go and move in this direction or I need to change this part of my life and they start hacking away at it, but it's pretty chaotic. And then the results that come through are chaotic as well. So we want to think this through a little bit more. We want to, you know, use our best intelligence to solve these problems uh, creatively. What's the right way to do it? Well, that's going to be different for different people. Um, the, you know, the thing we want to pay attention here is that when in applying a solution, there's an emotional effect. Some solutions are great for certain people because their emotions will align with that kind of solution space. Whereas other people may try to use that same thing and they're going to feel fear or intimidation or tons of anxiety when they try to use that approach. And it's just not going to work for them. So we want to find solutions that are personalized and also that honor the emotional effects they have on you. And that, again, requires a bit of experimentation divergently. So that's going to be a big part of this course. It's going to be a very exploratory and experimental hands-on course. Why the name Guild? Well, I think that's an interesting reframe, too. Instead of thinking of your social life as a tribe, which a lot of people use, a tribe being something that you're born into, the idea of a guild is something that you create by choice. It's a human construct. It is a group of people that join together for some common purpose that's going to be mutually beneficial. And that's one reason that a lot of people want to upgrade their social lives is they, they find their social lives lacking in meaning, lacking in depth, lacking in purpose. A lot of people, in fact, said they wanted deeper relationships. And I think what some people mean by that is they also want more range in the ways they connect with people. A number of people want to be able to mastermind with friends, you know, about creative ideas or business ideas career path changes they may want to embark upon. And with those same groups of friends, they want to have activity partners. They want to be able to share emotional intimacy and connection. They want to have fun and playful experiences together as well. So a lot of people want more spectrum, I'd say, in their relationships. And some people just want to have more intimacy uh, as well, be, be able to have deeper levels of trust with the people they spend the most time with. Now, with every course, I always like to get really good clarity about the collective intention for what we're seeking to accomplish. How are we looking to improve or upgrade our lives? And with Guild, that's clearly focused on our social circles and the experience of social alignment. 
And as I you know, went through the problems and challenges that people were experiencing and also their desires that they wanted to explore, uh, it became very clear that we need a lot of practice. We need a lot of interactivity so people can explore divergently. It's not enough to just make this as an audio course and just expect people to apply these ideas on their own. I think it's going to be much better if we bring people together as a group and do the whole course live. So that's why I chose the format of doing 30 live calls in 30 days. So we'll hop on a Zoom call, video call every day for 30 days in a row. And if you're watching this video in time for the start of the course to do it live, you can have that experience. Otherwise, we are recording the whole thing. So you also have the option to go through the recordings. Now, in this case, I definitely think the live experience is where it's at. It's, it's really the core design of the course. But I am also recording it so we can continue to offer it indefinitely, uh, not only for people who've gone through the live version to be able to review it later, but also for anybody years later, they may come across this and think, oh, I missed the live experience. Well, hey, you still get the recordings as another option to go through it. Additionally, for some people who have, you know, scheduling challenges, uh, you get the, you know, the recorded versions too, and you can even mix and match. You can attend some calls live when you can, and if not, that's fine. You can catch up on the recordings later. Uh, so we're, this is going to be a very interactive experience, and we're basically joining together to help each other work on upgrading our social lives. The vibe that I'm going for here is very gentle, uh, caring, compassionate, accepting, uh, especially forgiving. We want to have a very forgiving vibe in the space because we want to encourage people to divergently explore. That means encouraging people to make social and communication mistakes. So what we're doing is we're creating kind of a psychologically safe bubble of socializing practice. <laughs> so you get to practice with other people and I'm going to you know, make it very clear that this is a space where we're allowed to make mistakes. Okay, so I want you, if, if you're attending the calls live and you're participating in that reality with us, I want you to hold that intention that we want to create a space for people to explore divergently. We want to have a chance for people to share some of the things that they just haven't had the permission or the spaciousness to be able to share in other parts of their lives. So we want to create a space that is more flexible and more resilient so that people can explore all these different boundary conditions and the, they can cross borders that they haven't been able to cross socially and do it in a safe practice environment. And then they can get feedback from other people like, how did that land with you if I said that? You know, if I tried this communication style, do you like that better? Um, how do you perceive me? Um, it, and, and get this kind of, um, you know, big picture, full circle feedback on how your social skills are landing with people, how your communication style lands with people. That uh, does take some courage. You know, it, there's going to be people who won't do this course because they're afraid of that kind of experience. And I totally understand that. Uh, what I would encourage you to do is if you think this is going to be a growth experience and you think it will take some courage, Try leaning into that because I'm really going to do my absolute best to not make it a fear-based thing. This is not the kind of thing where I'm going to push you to go out in public and do, you know, stupid street approaches on random strangers um, just for the shock value of it. It's not that kind of experience. Um, we're really looking at more elegant solutions here. That, that, that I'd see is more of a brute force approach, <laughs> okay? So we're looking for honoring your emotional truth. And if you get into a space, uh, you know, and it feel, starts feeling anxious, we want to talk through that. We want to figure out like what's actually creating the anxiety In what situations are you able to not trigger anxiety? What situations are you able to possibly reframe uh, the, the assignment of meaning so that your body doesn't generate anxiety anymore? I've certainly gone through a lot of um, reframes getting into public speaking where I used to be really nervous about it, you know, get up to give a speech and my hands would shake and I couldn't control that necessarily. But then I dug deeper into it and I started noticing, like one time, I think in the sixth grade, I gave a speech about model rocketry. And I noticed as I got into it, I no longer was nervous. The nervousness went away. So I started noticing some patterns that I could build upon where I could get around fear, where I could get around anxiety. And eventually got to the point where, you know, I could do a three-day workshop speaking entirely off the cuff, just going with the flow of inspiration and audience suggestion, no pre-planned content all the way through. Did that as the Conscious Heart Workshop in 2015 and no fear whatsoever. It was actually the most fun workshop I've ever done up to that point. And the, you know, the idea here is to uh, explore and experiment and figure out, you know, what makes your body, your mind respond a certain way? What makes other people respond a certain way? We don't explore nearly enough in this space. You know, we just, we kind of inherit the limitations based on our upbringing 
and based on what society gives us. And a lot of society tries to teach us to conform, to be obedient, to be extra passive, not to rock the boat. Uh, or we get models that are just very misaligned, like go ahead and just be crazy, be reckless. Um, you know, this, this area of life is screaming for more intelligent solutions. So what would happen if we bring a bunch of growth-oriented people together and we work on this for a solid month? You know, every day we get together for a few hours at a time and we just practice and we test and we experiment and we co-create and we keep identifying new problems and we just do that day after day, iteratively. Uh, we're going to co-create this course as we go. In fact, every day there'll be a co-creative segment where we talk about what we're going to work on for the next day. So this is not something I'm laying out, you know, here's like, the God's truth all in advance, and, and we're just going to go through some kind of set curriculum. No, no, no. This is going to be uh, something that we create as we go for the benefit of the people that are actually signing up for the live experience. We have to base it on the people who show up to the calls, and it's going to be um, you know, designed specifically to help them solve their social problems and to upgrade their social lives in meaningful ways. How does that sound to you? Now, some people say, that your social circle represents your future. I do think that's a bit of an exaggeration, but of course it is true to say that you are influenced by the people in your social circle and you influence them as well. Now that influence can be very growth oriented or it can be something that leads to stuckness or stagnation. And one of the great lamentations I heard from people giving feedback on this was that their social circles are not growth oriented enough. At least there's not enough growth oriented people in them. And people want others in their social circle that have more passion and drive and ambition. In fact, a lot of people said they actually want their friends to challenge them in some ways. They want people who bring them new ideas and expose them to other ways of thinking. They want to have their old models, their old frames um, challenged and, and cracked now and then so they can uh, shift into a different mode of living and, and have some growth experiences of their own that are brought to them through their social circle. Um, and I have to say, that's a big part of my lifestyle is because I have so many, uh, just, you know, such a large collection of growth oriented friends um, all around the world uh, that the, you know, experience of living um, is often influenced by the people that I connect with most often. And because of that, it's like you're centered in this growth sphere socially. And that really creates a different life where you don't even have to think so much about trying to grow on your own. I remember what that was like back in my early 20s when I was just always listening to audio cassette tapes with a Walkman radio. I used to listen to them in college. And that would be like my growth-oriented influence because everyone else was pretty stagnant or they would just kind of go with the set curriculum like in, in school, you know, taking a certain number of classes and so on. Um, and I wanted to do something more ambitious. And so I had to get those influences through... <laughs> Um, audio programs, basically, or books, you know, some other people that were growth oriented, but they were not physically present in my life very much at all. Uh, and that's the case for a lot of people. They just don't have that growth sphere in their social circles. And so that's something we want to work on getting you to in that course. So you get the exposure, you know, for 30 days, you get that chance to explore and experience that to see what it's like. What's it like to have dozens of people connecting with you each day in a very growth oriented way where you're, you know, working on mutual benefit and mutual gain. Um, I, you know, that's a normal part of my life. And I want to give you a chance to experience that in some depth, because I think once you have a, a sense of what it's really like, it'll be really hard to go back. If you go through that kind of experience and then you go back to a stuck and stagnant situation, that's going to help you get unstuck because you'll just be looking at this reference experience and thinking, I can't, I can't tolerate this crap anymore. And you'll start making some real changes there. So that's, that's one of the benefits of, of having that experience. Moreover, specifically in the course, we want to work on your outside the course life. It's not just about like, let's give you this experience and then, you know, feed you back to the sharks. No, we want to give you the experience. Um, and as you go through it, work on real upgrades as you go. So we're going to encourage you to make some changes as you go along. Now it's up to you if you want to have that experience or if you want to go through the course and just kind of le more learning mode and think about applying it later. Um, but I think you're going to get more benefit if you apply the ideas to some extent as you go through the course so that you can start making changes and improvements and upgrades along the way. I think that's going to be a, a big part of the, the benefit of doing this with a group is that we all encourage the heck out of each other to like go for it, to make these kinds of changes now. Uh, why wait? You know, let's, let's just get this, uh, let's pull the bandaid off if we need to do that in some of these relationships that aren't working and let's move forward. Let's progress. Let's advance. 
uh, where else are you going to get this kind of experience where you have, you know, a, a warm, caring, friendly audience um, like we've attracted for previous courses? If you've been in some of our previous courses where we had live calls, you've already seen that kind of energy uh, that, that we bring together. Uh, it's very beautiful kind of energy. Um, it really encourages a lot of open sharing. We're going to have a lot of open sharing on the calls as well. Uh, so I really encourage you to, to lean into this experience if you think it's going to benefit you. Also think about how much abundance flows into your life through people, socially. I mean, money is a social instrument of love, of course, pleasure, uh, adventure, business opportunities, teamwork of all kinds. All of that is a social experience. And so if you want more abundance of any kind in your life, it makes a lot of sense to upgrade your social skills and upgrade your social circle to reduce the friction and to increase the flow through which opportunities and invitations come to you. If you create a very invitation-rich social life where your social circle is constantly bringing you invitations and opportunities, it means you don't have to do a lot less work. It means, you know, things come to you. That's basically how I grew my personal development business. Uh, pretty much all the ideas for income streams, they all came through other people. I networked with other bloggers in the beginning. I started learning what other people were doing. And people said, hey, Steve, do you know about this income opportunity? Hey, Steve, do you know about this you know, way to improve your website? Uh, they shared with me, uh, partly because I did the same. I shared with them. And so by investing in mutually beneficial relationships, it's a way for other people to help elevate each other in business. In uh, Conscious Growth Club, for instance, we recently created a YouTubers group for people who want to get into YouTubing, um, myself included. And so we're all encouraging each other and we're having regular Zoom meetings where we help each other. So that's kind of like a guild within a guild. Do you want to invest in this kind of experience? Do you want the shifts and gains that come from upgrading your social life? Would you like to do this as part of a group with many other people and work on this together in a co-creative and caring and supportive environment? Do you want the memory of having invested in 30 days of social upgrades? Does that sound good to you? If so, I very much invite you to join us. I'll be there to help guide you through this experience and we'll co-create this journey together. I think it's going to be really beautiful. So I hope you'll decide to join us. And if so, I'll see you inside and take care.